So this is the third in a series of videos about metaprogramming in Lean. If you've watched the first two videos, you should now have a sense of what happens when we improve something using a tactic script. Lean is going to parse that tactic script as a meta expression. It's going to evaluate it in the virtual machine to produce some kind of proof term. The tactic script that you write is somehow a function that takes a tactic state, whatever that is, and it creates an expression. And this function is written in the language of Lean itself. So this points to an obvious question. How do we manipulate Lean expressions in Lean? That's the topic of this video. The type expr is defined in the core Lean library. This type is a semi-faithful reflection of how expressions are actually represented in the Lean source code. Um, for our purposes, we should think of it more like an API for manipulating these actual C++ expressions. So let's see what it looks like in the library. I'm going to jump to the definition, and we see that it is in uh, core Lean. For the moment, we're going to ignore this elaborated parameter, which has a default value of true. Um, but we should notice that this is a meta-inductive type. Inductive meaning that every expression is a tree built up using these constructors. Some of them are atomic, and some of them will recurse. They'll take expressions as arguments themselves. So let's start by looking at the atoms. The var constructor um, represents a bound variable. So it takes a natural number, which is the uh, de Brown index of this, uh, of this bound variable. If you don't know what a de Brown index is, um, you might look at the definition on Wikipedia or something like that. But very briefly spe uh, speaking, the index represents the number of binders that appear between this occurrence of this variable and the binder that, is, uh, that corresponds to it. Um, if you don't know what this means, that's OK. Most of the time, we don't actually deal with these bound variables directly. They're a very low-level implementation thing, and we have APIs for, um, for handling them in a nicer way when we are writing metaprograms. A sort represents a type universe. Remember that types are expressions, too, just like non-type terms are. Um, the level argument here is something that we defined earlier. You can inspect the definition on your own. Again, we don't deal with these directly all that often. A constant is not exactly what you get if you use the, uh, the keyword constant to create a declaration in Lean. Rather, a constant expression, a const, refers to something in the environment that has a name. For instance, if I wanted to talk about the type nat as an expression, I would construct the const expression with name nat, and there are no universe parameters, so I'd give it an empty list here. Um, if I wanted to apply some function named f that I've defined in my library to some other expression, I would create a constant with name f and apply that. So constants are things that have names in our environment. Meta variables are another instance of what could be a confusing name. We've now used the word meta three times in three different contexts. Um, this is unrelated to other uses of the word meta. Um, we think of meta variables as placeholders. So these are expressions that don't really have values that are waiting to be filled in by some other information. We use them in partially constructed terms. Um, local con and uh, the arguments to a meta variable, I should say, they have a, a unique name. They also have a name that we use for pretty for pretty printing. Um, and every meta variable tracks its own type. Well, its type is an expr. So here's our first instance of recursion. To construct an mvar expression, we need a type expression to begin with. Local constants. Um, these represent variables that are free in the local context, but should get bound eventually. I'll say more on that in a second. A local, con a local constant has a unique name and a pretty printing name, like a meta variable. 
We can ignore the binder info field, that's not so important. And like a meta variable, it also carries around its own type. Now, with meta variables and local constants, these types of expressions should never appear in a final proof term. When we're defining something, we end up with a type and a value that we send to the kernel. And we ask the kernel, does this value have the type that I claim it has? Neither the type nor the body should contain any meta variables or any local constants. These are used in constructing terms, but the final result should always get rid of them. So these are all of our atomic expressions. Let's look at the compound ones. Um, application is the big one. So an application is just a, a, between two expressions. We give it um, a function expression, hopefully an expression that has a function type, and we give it an argument the application applies that function to that argument. And the uh, sort of the converse relation, we can also do abstractions. This is how we create a function. Um, for applications, we only have one kind of expression type that will handle both terms and types. For abstractions, we have a distinction between a lambda abstraction and a pi abstraction. A pi abstraction is a function type, a lambda abstraction is a function. Um, so these have very similar signatures. Both of them take a name for the variable. This is really just used for printing purposes. Um, variables are anonymous, as we saw. They're indexed with natural numbers. Um, they take binder info that we'll ignore. The binder, the lambda or the pi, contains the type of the variable that it's binding. Notice that our bound variables didn't carry around their own type, because we can always determine that from the corresponding binder. And then they have the body um, of the expression. The idea being, if I had a function that took in a natural number and produced an integer, the variable type would be nat, and the body would be some expression whose type is int. And again, pi expressions are um, function types, whereas lambdas are functions. Then finally, we have a third kind of binder, a let binder. This assigns an actual value to the variable that it binds. So we take in, once again, a name, a type, an assignment that says we're binding the variable named var name to have this value. So assignment should be a term with type type. And then the body of the let can contain a new bound variable. The last construction macro is one that's more of an internal only thing. There's not really an API for dealing with macros at the meta level. Um, so we're not going to discuss that one. So let's write some functions to manipulate expressions. For convenience, I'm going to open the expert namespace here. Um, and the first function I want to write is a pretty simple one. It's going to check if an expression is a constant whose name appears in the list of names that I'll give. So I'm going to write metadef is constant of, I give a list of names. And this is going to be a function from expert to bool. So we saw that expr was an inductive type, which means we can pattern match on it. And a convenient way to do this, because there are a lot of constructors, let's use the whole command to generate a list of equations for the type that we're interested in. So here are all of our constructors for the type expr. Um, OK, so I'm really only interested in constants. I'm asking, is this expression a constant whose name appears in a list? So I'm just going to delete all these constructors, actually, only keep the const one. And 
Now we have to ask ourselves, what does this constructor do? Well, it takes a name and a list of levels. I don't care about the list of levels. I really just care about that name, which we've given the name A. And I want to know if A appears in L. Otherwise, if my expression is not a constant, I think my function should just return false. So it's actually very simple to implement. How do we test it? I'd like to write something like this, right? Eval is constant of and the list of names. Well, let's see if we have something that's in nat or int. Um, and I want to see if, uh, yeah, the natural numbers are in nat or int. Lean complains about this, rightfully so. It's expecting a list of names here and an expression here. But I gave it nat, and nat is a type. It's not an expert. I haven't gone to the meta level. I'm still working at the object level of lean, where nat, we've defined nat, to be some type. The same for what I've written over here. Nat and int are types. If I wrote plus, it would have some other signature. It's expecting a name or a list of names. So conveniently, Lean gives us ways to write names and to write experts without going down to those bare constructors. Let's start with the names. If I want to refer to the name nat instead of the, uh, the type nat, what I do is put a backtick in front of it. So nat and int. These now refer to the name nat, which is really just a string, and the name int. Um, so I fixed that part. But still, over here, I have the type nat instead of the expression representing that type nat. And we saw how to create expressions. There are all of these constructors of this inductive type. I have to think about, well, nat is a constant, and does it have any, uh, any universe parameters? And that all sounds like a mess. Lean also gives us a way to anti-quote expressions. We use the same backtick, um, but followed by parentheses. And we put the expression that we want inside of those parentheses. So now this refers to the expression nat instead of the type nat. And we look at the eval, it's good. This is true. It tells us that this is a constant that appears, whose name appears in the list that we provided. And just to check, what if we wrote bool instead? Good, that's false. So we can quote names, and we can quote expressions. Quoting expressions is extremely powerful, because really, who wants to write out an expression using all of those constructors that we saw by hand? Um, we don't always have to write functions using pattern matching like this for writing on expressions. There's a big API in expert.lean and in other places in Matlib for dealing with expressions. Just look at all these functions that we can use. Let's do another quick example. Um, let's write a function that tests, instead of if an expression is a constant that appears in a list, let's test if it's an application of a constant that appears in a list. We're going to again have a list name. And this time, we're just going to take the expert and produce a bool. And we're going to say let app name be e.getApp function in this. So I know that the function getApp function does what I want. It takes an expression, it produces an expression. And that expression is the, uh, sort of the, the first expression in e. Um, that is applied to other things. So if we do this, then we can check is constant of l app name. And once again, we can evaluate this to check eval is app of. Um, let's, so let's see if we have an inequality. Uh, give it a list. These are the names for less than, less than or equal to. And the expression that we give it, again, we can anti-quote something like 20 less than 5. Doesn't matter if it's false. 20 less than 5 is an application of hasLT.LT. .lt. 
20 less than or equal to 5 is also, 20 equal to 5 is not. So I highly recommend looking through expert.lin, see some of the functions that are available. There's a lot there that you want to understand, but just get in a sense of what's already built in. Um, and look at how many of these functions are defined. So let's try something else. Let's try to make an application. Remember that there's an app constructor for expert. Expert.app just takes two expressions and produces an expression. So I'm going to try to create an application by writing eval app. And let's just give it nat.suck and nat.0. Lean complains. There's something about nat.suck has type reflected, blah, blah, blah. Um, so there are some reasons for this. They're related to that uh, optional parameter in the expression type. And I don't want to go into the details once again. For our convenience here and later, I'm going to define a quick function, metadef make app which takes two expressions and returns an expr, which is just app e1, e2. So here, let's eval make app. And it's happier. But it says the result type does not have an instance of has wrapper. That just means it doesn't know how to print an expression. So uh, say to string. And that's good. We made the application of nat.suck to nat.0. The output isn't super interesting. I mean, it's written it just the way that we would write it as input syntax. What if we really wanted to see what this application looked like? I mean, it is an application. That's a constructor. Where does the application appear? Well, if we're really curious about the raw structure, we can use the function to raw format. And we see, OK, this is an application of a constant to a constant. So expert.to raw format is very convenient if you really want to introspect into what an expression looks like under the hood. Um, the output can be hard to parse sometimes. So a lot of the time, we want to write functions that only operate on expressions that have a certain pattern. And as we've seen, the, uh, the list of construction, constructors for expressions is very long. We don't want to write out patterns using those constructors. We prefer to use anti-quotations like this. And really conveniently, Lean lets us use those in pattern matches, as well as for constructing concrete expressions like this. Um, so as another example of a function on expressions, let's write something that takes in a comparison, like uh, x is less than y, and returns the left and the right-hand sides. So it should return x and y. Let's call this get LHS RHS. It's going to be expert to, and we should think about our return type here. If I give it a comparison, it should produce a pair of two expressions. But Otherwise, I need some default value. So I can make it option value. It's going to return some pair if I give it a comparison, and otherwise it will return none. So before we did this pattern match by considering different constructors, really we only considered one, this time I want to write something like this. If I give it an expression that look, looks like a is less than b, then I want to return some a, b. But lean complains, unknown identifier b. Well, OK, I mean, this is, this is just some expert, and I haven't defined anything in the environment named a or b. Really, I wanted to bind a and b to new variables so that I can return them. I can refer to what it captures on the right-hand side. So I can do that using anti-quotations which we write with a double percent sign. So now the A and B end up in context on the right-hand side. If I comment that for a second, we see that we have expressions A and B that we can use um, for our return value. 
And okay, well, what if I give it a is less than or equal to b? I want the same thing, sum a b. And otherwise, let's just give it none. Cool, let's test our function. And let's test it on something like uh, 2 is less than 5. OK, no wrapper, so let's do 2 string. Looks better. It's, it's sum. I see some things that look kind of like numbers, but there's a lot to parse here. This is kind of hard to read. We're not even using 2 raw format, and this is kind of hard to read. So let me show you a trick that I'm not going to explain yet. This comes in, a, uh, in the next video. Right, tactic.trace, then we get it printed in a much prettier way. Indeed, our left-hand side was 2 and our right-hand side was 5. Works also with less than or equal to. If I give it an equality, then neither of these two cases captures, and we return none. So this is also a very useful pattern to use. A lot of the time when you write functions that are taking expressions as input, we're going to pattern match on them, not using the expression constructors, but rather using quoted expressions and anti-quoted values to capture certain pieces of that expression. So finally, I wanted to talk about lambdas. What do function expressions look like? Well, OK, we can, we can take a look at the raw format of a lambda expression just to see. So I'm going to do something like toString. Uh, expert to raw format. Um, and then I'm going to give it the expression lambda x nat x, the identity function on the natural numbers. Now, once again, Lean complains about something reflected, blah, blah, blah. I need to tell it that this is actually an expert. Um, ignore the details there. But we see the raw format of this expression is lambda x default. The default is binder info that we'll ignore. And then we have the type. We're taking in a variable of type nat. And we see the bound variable with the brand index 0 appearing in the body. So yeah, OK, that's there. What can we do with it? Here's an interesting idea for a function. I want to take in an expert. And if that expression is a function from nat to nat, I want to return the function that takes in a nat, applies the function that we took in, and adds 1. So it should always have value 1 more than the function that we give it as an input. Let's try to write something like this. It's going to have type expert to option expert. Once again, I'm not going to restrict my inputs in any way. I can take in any expression, but I'm only interested in the function ones. So let's do a pattern match here. And rather than using the anti-quote syntax, let's, uh, let's look at the constructors, because I really care about lambdas. I only care about the one constructor. So if I take a lambda expression, then what information do I have? I have the name of the bound variable. I have binder info, whatever. I have the type of the bound variable. And then I have the body, which, as we saw up here, will contain some bound variable. What I'd like to do is return the function that takes in the same argument and produces the successor of the body. So first, let's produce the successor of the body. Let's let new body be make app and apply nat.suck to body. 
So I have some new expression that's the successor of my body expression. I want to produce a function, so I can really copy the structure of the input. I, I want to produce the expression lam var name binder info var type, but then I want to make the body new body instead of just body. Let's test our work here. Uh, let's give it fun x and x. Okay, that looks reasonable. The function that takes in a natural number and produces the successor. We've manipulated our lambda expression as a raw expression, but the reason I wanted to do this example is because it's dangerous. Because I'm working in raw expression, with no context knowledge, no way to figure out what unfolds to what, what makes sense and what doesn't, it's very easy to do stupid things and create nonsensical expressions. Let me apply the same function to the identity function on the integers. Takes in an integer, returns it. So now my function that I've created using a suck fun says I've produced a function that takes in an integer and applies nat.suck to that integer. And that doesn't make sense. That doesn't type check. Because I'm working in raw expressions with no knowledge of the context, no knowledge what anything means, more or less, I can't detect that the thing I've produced is nonsensical. It's a valid expression. It just doesn't have a type. So most of the time, we don't want to just do bare operations on expressions like this, at least not unless we're being very careful. A lot of the time, we're going to work in a situation, in a context that's aware of the environment, which is the tactic monad. And this is the topic for the next video.